We're good. All right, the Preakness is in the books, and it's now time to talk about the Belmont Stakes. And Ed, you've got a fair odds line for, for us to look forward to. Uh, how did this come together, and what's standing out to you? Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Uh, Baker's dozen right now. Probably won't get all 13, but my thought at this point, Mark, isn't so much about, oh, I can't wait to bet Tappa Trice at 7-2 to two or whoever at whatever price. But getting an understanding of how the field fits together and as horses come in or out, uh, just – not having to go back to the drawing board every time. So uh, certainly a work in progress. I would expect some of these to come down, especially if certain key contenders come out like Arabian Lion. They've said maybe the Woody Stevens, maybe the Belmont Stakes. Right now, he's probably my most intriguing at five to one because I think he'd be higher than that. Uh, but if he's out, that'll certainly shape the rest of the field. Okay, and you've got Tappa Trice at 7-2. to two. What's your thought there is making him the favorite? Uh, well, probably a little bit of confirmation bias because he was my horse in the Kentucky Derby. So okay. as, as we know, I fall in love. I bet Tiz the Bomb last week in the Cardinal. But uh, realistically, Tappa Trice, uh, he's by Tappet, who needs no introduction to the Belmont Stakes with four winners. He's trained by Todd Pletcher, also four winners in the Belmont Stakes. And this is a horse dating back to March after the Tampa Bay Derby. I remember people saying, oh, Oh, well, he'll win the Belmont. He might not win the Derby. And not that that's a reason to like a horse, but I agreed with him then. He certainly fits the profile other than being a deep closer. But I think with this group and not having to worry so much about the post position, to me, he's the most likely winner at this point. But I will be price sensitive. Yeah, he definitely is. A, he's a tap that a lot of people are thinking about <laughs> uh, for the Belmont as betters and and. I agree with you, making him the favorite. I actually talked to Pletcher after he won on Holy Bull Day on a golf stream, and we were talking about the, the Derby and the Belmont, and he, of course, was like, there's no limit to the distance that this horse <laughs> can run. So um, I could even see his whole price coming down further, but uh, love the 7-2 to two line, two and a half weeks out. Yeah, and all depends. You know, Forte, certainly, if he's working lights out with Irad Ortiz aboard, uh, he could be the favorite. And Angel of Empire, we haven't mentioned yet, uh, the closing third in the Kentucky Derby. Certainly has done little wrong. And really, other than Mage, I would say is the horse who has checked every box. Now, he didn't win the Derby, but certainly ran well coming off two Derby prep wins. So I hope it holds together. This is an exciting field. Oh, dynamite. And talking about Angel Vampire, just uh, you know, a lot of comments on, on your article. Uh, Tim Tam Ted said, please, dear Lord, give me Angel Vampire at six to one. Uh, also, K-Girl, Citation, and Maidan Rocks all said pretty much the same thing, is love to have some Angel of Empire. I always encourage people to actually do the math on their own line, because when you're talking about 13 horses and a strict 100-point line, you realize pretty quick how high the odds have to be to make it all weigh out. But I think we'll get at least a couple defections. And after having a look at the Ragazin sheets, I would say Angel of Empire and Hit Show or two that I expect to come down on the price I'm willing to take. All right. We'll look forward to more fair odds on Belmont from you. And uh, like you said, hope this field stays together. It's a dynamite field. No, it's uh, exciting. The mile and a half always adds to the intrigue. So looking forward to it.